What's good everybody, Mike here from FlyZone and today I'm here to talk to you about these. The Meps King Space 2306 1750KB motors and we're going to be talking about the F7 Mini flight controller along with the 45 amp ESC and I'm going to let you know that there are some pros and cons in this video. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later but right now we're going to be talking about the Meps motors. So let's start with the Meps motors. Here are the 2306-1750KB motors. It has a 6082 aluminum alloy and an N52H arc magnets. This increases efficiency and shortens motor response time that allows the motor to run as smoothly as silk. Now MEPS King does claim that each motor is individually factory tested and ensures the quality and reliability. These are rated for 6S, but you can fly 4S with these if you like. The peak current on these is 1.3 amps and total of 36.9 amps. The shaft diameter is 5.5 uh, millimeter shaft. Protruding length is a 12 millimeter. So the dimensions are 29.3 by 30 millimeter and these motors do weigh around 32 grams. Now let's get into the MEPS ESC. This is the MEPS ESE. 45 amp this board comes in the black cardboard box as you see here with the following accessories they include an xt60 battery lead cable four flight controller data cables a 470 uf 35 volt capacitor and two sets of rubber grommets it has a 20 by 20 mounting pattern and it is suitable for a 3.5 or 5 inch frame the board itself measures about 33.5 by 39.8 millimeter and it weighs almost 10 grams. It has a six pin connector that has following panel. As you see, it has the telemetry, current ESC4, ESC3, ESC2, and ESC1. And ESC1. You have a battery plus and a ground negative pad. The large battery pads do have a solder hole for the low ESR capacitor. And my recommendations for that, for the battery cable, is the lipo wire length must be kept short to avoid damaging electrical components and that is due to voltage spiking if you use a 6s i suggest that you place a stock capacitor with a 1000 uf1 now for the mosfets on board they are the on semi high and mosfets and it is flashed with bl heli 32 firmware let's talk about f7 mini flight controller it also comes in a box and it comes with accessories dji unit cable two types of esc cables and two sets of silicone grommets one of the esc cables in this box has a 28 pin connector that are intended for the meps escs and the second cable only has one connector which gives you customization flexibility with an 8 or 10 pin plug the flight controller board is based on the STM32 F722 CPU and it measures 37 by 37 by 8 millimeter. It has a 20 by 20 mounting pattern and is suitable for a 2.5 or 5 inch frame. There is USB type C port. It has a ESE connector for digital and for VTX. Um, there's a boot button. There's soldering pads on top of the flight controller and it has five UR ports. And there's a dedicated buzzer and LED pads and for GPS modules. There's a group of six pads, there's a uh, ground, there's the RX3, TX3, and so on. Next to the Type-C port, it has a 10 volt and five volt pads for powering the VTX and other external modules. And there's plenty other pads as well. By default, the flight controller does come with a beta flight version 4.3.1 and the target is a T-Motor F7. Now, if those of you don't know who T-Motor is, it is a well-established brushless motor company. They make one of the best motors in the FPV industry. Now, this flight controller supports BMP280 barometer, has a black box 16 megabyte flash, and it does have a back on board. There's a 5 volt 2 amp and a 10 volt 2 amp. And it has 5 UR ports. There's an OSD chip, the AT7456E HD, and it weighs 5.2 gram. 
That's all the info I have on the specs on the motors, flight controller, and ESCs. Now the only thing is left to do is to go out and test fly it. We're gonna put it all together on my five inch frame. We're gonna put it on the Boda FX. That's Bot's older frame. We're going to test fly it and we're gonna check its performance and hopefully we'll test its durability if I get a chance. Then after what we'll do from the flight from the flight test, we'll come back here in the studio. We'll do some. Uh, I'm going to give you my pros and cons, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on on this setup. We're going to be doing a test flight on these MEPS motors, the 2306 uh, 1750KB motors, along with the uh, F7 Mini flight controller with the 45 amp ESCs by MEPS. We're going to give it a go, and we're going to see how well it is. So we're going to be testing the performance. And then hopefully uh, we'll see the durability um, if I do any crashing. So let's get to it. Let's go. All right, let's do this. Let's fly. Let's test this baby out. And let's go. There we go. So we're gonna test out. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm gonna cruise just a little bit, just to test out the. Um, Get get a, a feel of the area and you can get a feel of the motors and everything so Okay, so there we have it. We went out, we test flew it. So let's get started with the pros and, and cons on the design. Now the design is very nice. I like the craftsmanship on these motors. Um, the colors are great. They're gorgeous. There's plenty of other colors if you like to choose different colors. So A plus for that. Now for the cons maps, I do think you should have made the bottom base of the motors a little flatter. Um, as you can see here, there's a protruding bit 
uh, sticking out on the bottom base that doesn't sit that doesn't sit flat on the arms. I totally get why you did that. You probably didn't want the screws to hit the motor windings. Um, so I totally understand that. Um, but I would like to make a suggestion. Maps King, if you can, please just flatten down that base and, or make it and make it thicker if you like. So we don't get that the screws to hit the motor windings or you can just put a plastic skirt underneath the motor underneath the motor windings so they the screws don't hit the windings so yeah that's my con on that now let's talk about the performance the performance I think they were it was good I think they are smooth they are fast they are responsive especially for flying where I flew um, the durability was okay from where I flew um, you know at, at a field with trees you should see it hit the tree so they were okay they survived um, but for bando crashing, some hardcore crashing on concrete, I haven't tested them yet, so I don't know. I can't tell you if they would be good, but I do trust my friend Dave from Fly High. He's well known in this industry, in the FPV industry, and he's a good friend of mine, and I'm gonna take his advice. So he showed me pictures and they did not look good. So now let's uh, get into the uh, flight controller. Let's get into the pros and cons on the flight controller and the ESC. Now I can tell you that I really do like both of these setups together. I found no issues at all. Um, this combination will give you good performance and reliability. They give you a lot of options on the soldering pads and um, you know, they give you a lot, lot more features on there. I mean, it's good. So I mean, I had no issues with the flight controller or the ESCs. I do like them. So yeah, no cons at all on that. So there you have it. That's my take on it and hopefully you enjoyed this video and it was informative to you um, if you did like the video please make sure you hit the like button subscribe and hit that all not notifications bell so you don't miss future content that comes from the channel 